Presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans, I am Lance Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the legend, Eddie George! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There it is! There it is! There it is. It's gonna be Thank a good you. show when you hear that. Yes, oh man, we must have won. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> How about that? Against the dangerous Kansas City Chiefs. What a great game, what man. It? Down by, what, 10 points early in the game? Mm -hmm. Found a way back. It was, they were resilient. A yeah. game that they needed to win. Absolutely. And, yes. and it's, it, they, the Chiefs didn't lay down. Mahomes, Mahomes, he did his thing. Oh, no, he, he, he put up some big numbers. Yeah. I mean, we, we're going to talk about that. But we put up the more important numbers, and that's the points. The W. Yeah, yeah. the W. Yeah. Oh, man, what a game. All right, well, uh, Let's, uh, let's kick off this show, and uh, we're going to get down to the four downs with Eddie, but I do want to highlight this, I and mean, we're going to talk about the big players, mm -hmm. but there are some real unsung heroes. I mean, we're going to talk about Joshua Kalu. We don't mention his name, nah. but he, had a, he was a hero. Uh, Chris Milton making some big-time stops on special teams. Mm -hmm. Anthony Ferkser, I mean, clutch, clutch, man. These guys are, this team is really coming together. No, it really is. I mean, it was a complete team win. Mm -hmm. And the guys that you just named, they, you don't hear about them a lot. They're not going to have their names in the, in the press. You're not going to be on ESPN. You're not going to get the call from Dion on, mm -hmm. on NFL Network. Get the call, right. <laughs> right. right. Uh, but, but certainly all their effort and all the plays that they made in last week's game went toward a big win that they needed. Mm -hmm. and, and you could sense the sense of urgency that they yeah. came out with. Even though they fell behind early, they, they chopped their way at it. They yeah. stayed consistent. They stayed with the game plan. Not just with the team, but also in the coaching staff, and not deviating and panicking and, yeah. and trying to throw the ball over the, all over the yard. They, st they stuck with the game plan and the paid off dividends for them. Let's uh, let's break it down. Four downs with Eddie. Mm -hmm. uh, first down. Here we go. Uh, we've been talking about him all season, and we'll continue to. Henry explodes. Uh, Twenty-three carries, 188 yards, two TDs. He's doing it, man. Listen, he's the face of the franchise. Yeah. Um, Derrick Henry. Uh, all season long, he's been consistent. Even in the losses, yeah. he's been putting up numbers. He's mm -hmm. been getting the hard, tough yards. And last week, against a team that couldn't stop the run really well, yeah. uh, just exploded on him. I mean, he, he just had a breakout game. You could sense that he was going to have that breakout game when the game was close and he could they could run the football consistently. Yeah. Breaks off a big run here, but... The runs that I was really impressed with were the runs in between the tackles, the yeah. hard threes, the hard fours, the hard five. He was constantly going forward yeah. consistently. And coming on the back end of the season, coming off the bye week, yeah. I expect more of that. Yes. I think his, 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 his carries will increase because he's having, in my opinion, he's the MVP of this team, the face of the franchise. Absolutely. He's by the and, and hats off to that O-line. I know they had some struggles early in the season, uh, but if you go back and look at the tape, Saffold is pushing guys around, yes. you know, they're, they're making the blocks, they're making room for him, and he's taking advantage and running hard. And when you can get into a good run rhythm and mm -hmm. you can uh, fire off on a defensive line and create a new line of scrimmage downfield, yeah. it helps the pass protection, it helps everything, and it opens up th everything for the offense. It makes Tandy Hill feel comfortable in the pocket and, uh, and do his thing. Yeah, all right, well, second down, uh, mm -hmm. listen, they, like I said, Mahomes did his thing. Uh, the, 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 the Chiefs have a dynamic offense. They moved the ball between the 20s, over 400 yards in passing. I mean, the dude was, was, was on fire, but the defense steps up big where it counts. They didn't let, you know, the big plays in the end zone happen. They, they shut them down. You, you have uh, Evans with the scoop and score. Uh, Ryan with the great strip Logan there, Ryan, you know. Yes. A, a Dory Jackson's flying all over the place. Yes. So, good no, defense. Well, listen, we, we knew that this offense is potent. 
and yeah. they're explosive. They can yeah. put up 55 points in six seconds. Yeah. It seems like in Mahomes coming off the knee injury, you knew he was going to put up big numbers. So yeah. it's almost like the Jordan uh, rules. Give Michael Jordan his points. He's going to score 65, 55 points. Just keep it close. Right. And, and make the defensive plays when you have to. And the Titans did just that. Yeah. From 20 to 20, give them all the yards they want. Yeah. But don't let them score. Make them kick field goals. And they were able to do that. Yeah. They limited the big plays. They held them to uh, – uh, uh, not a whole bunch of big plays, yeah, but they points. were able to score. And Mahomes had a lot of yards, but for the most part, they were in it until the end, and they yeah. found a way to win. Two or three in the red zone, I think. Uh, under 100 yards rushing, too. I think yes. that was a key factor. Uh, third down, listen, uh, he's 3-1 and one as a starter, but Tannehill mm -hmm. really, really made a statement in this game, the way especially he seemed to take over in the second half. I mean, to me... A big stat for him, I mean, he was he was pinpoint uh, with these passes, but three rushes for 37 yards, and those were big-time rushes. Big-time rushes with that his right legs, there. especially see, the two-point conversion. The two-point conversion and, and just his toughness. Yeah. You know, he is providing the spark that they were looking for out, yeah. out of this position. And that's not a knock on Mariota because Mariota's had his moments yes. throughout the course of the season uh, last year and so forth. But what they need right now, he's giving that to them. Uh, look at that hard, tough run, right? When you see your quarterback doing that. Yes, right that here. Just, that look, attitude. This look looks at that. like you in the Super Bowl. That, that, yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> look at him. Look, standing over the uh, over the defender. I mean, that's – when you see your quarterback do that, lower his head and shoulder into the, into the defender yeah. and drive for a touchdown. And push it through. I mean, that's what you want. And, God, and that energy just permeates and explodes into the rest of your team and it uplifts you. And you can see level. it. You can see it. I love it. All right, well, we aren't going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, mm -hmm. It's an easy statement right here. The crowd was a factor. Let me hear you. Yeah. yeah. So, the red – there was a lot of red, a lot of Chiefs fans, but man, you guys were nice and loud where you needed to be, especially on those third downs. Uh, the 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 botched the first botched field goal snap, the crowd was a factor. You guys showed up. Mike Vrabel commented on it. The crowd was a factor, and I know we'll be moving forward. So uh, hats off to you guys. Thank you. Thank for you. Showing up and showing yes. out. Let me yes. hear you one yes. more time. Yes. That's what I like to hear right there. All right, we got lots more to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on your car insurance. So with that, we'll go to break with our Geico Fast 15. Stick around. Titans Blitz. We'll be right back. Hi. Run Henry. Finds room up the middle. He's to the 35 to the 40. Midfield. 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown! Titans. Tannehill. Firing over the middle. Caught. Humphrey's 5. Humphrey touchdown. Titans. Tannehill keeping. Around right in, driving, he's in! And Eddie, back with you. It is now halftime here on the show. Uh, so, Eddie, I got a question for you. What is your biggest phobia? Uh, I have a ton of them. Believe oh, yeah? Them. Yeah, you? rats and snakes, too. It's obvious, but right. horses. Rats, snakes, and horses? Yes. Were you afraid of, like, a Chinese calendar? What's up? No, uh, I, had, I had a bad experience when I was seven. Long story short, I was riding this horse, and my mom and my sister, and the horse took off down the creek, and I couldn't control it. As soon as he stopped, I said, I will never get on a horse again. And have Jumped you? off. I've never gotten never that Never done going. it. All right. Man of his word. <laughs> yeah. Well, we asked that of our, uh, of our Titans players in this week's uh, Titans 411. So check it out. Titans 411, powered by Snickers. Being left in the jungle, something like that, and you know I, I, I get itchy mad fast, and I just it just freaks me out. Snakes, absolutely cannot stand a snake. Probably heights, especially Ferris wheels. Is there such thing as a Ferris wheel phobia? Ferris wheel phobia. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna say. Creatures in the ocean. I'm not scared of the ocean, but I don't belong in there. We don't know. We know more about space than we do the ocean, so stay away from your boy. <laughs> uh, can I skip though? Yeah. <laughs> I, skip that. Uh, I, I hate transfer trucks. Like, like I'm afraid to be alone on a dark road and there's a, a truck behind me. 
Like I get spooked out, so I guess it was that like a trucker phobia or something, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Biggest phobia? Like afraid of that's what you're afraid of, right? Snakes, dude. I don't mess with snakes at all. They scare the hell out of me. Moving on, getting to know uh, more of our players. But you, you look you look sharp tonight. Another guy that likes to look sharp. Uh, our left guard, Roger Saffold, got to hook up with a legendary designer here in Nashville and got a look that is so very Nashville. You know, look sharp on the road. I got you. Check this out. I'm going to be meeting with Manuel, legendary jacket maker in his industry, also with the Hard Hatters. He's been making hats for me a bunch. And now bringing that LA fashion to Nashville. Let's see what they got for us. Manuel is a legend. Uh, he's, he's done pieces for all types of pop stars, including Michael Jackson, um, Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash. I mean, the list just goes on and on. So why not have something from him personally that you know will never be replicated again? And something special that I can keep for myself and be able to show the rest of the world. What makes this deal so special is that Manuel's actually working with one of my good friends, Logan, who has helped me out with not just a suit, but also a hat piece. Just as many as the custom suits that Manuel makes, so does Logan with his custom hats. No two are ever alike. So this is really a special collaboration between those two, and of course, is for me. So getting to work with Roger, he's has some of the coolest style in the world. He's so fun, he's so outgoing. Great, great husband, great father. So just to be able to work with somebody like that, for me, is really awesome. You know, he's coming to Nashville. He wants to represent Nashville. Not only the Titans, but the Titans Nashville. And to me, that's pretty darn cool. All right, guys, the suit is done. I haven't seen it yet, haven't seen the suit or the hat, but now it's time to go in, check it out, get all fit and ready for Sunday. All right, okay. Oh, snap. This is next level. Man, this is supreme, man. Those. The hat is nice now. Uh, he, he's ready for a CMA red yeah, carpet. Yeah, yeah. Come see him. I, I want to come see him. I will say yeah. this, though. After seeing that, Manuel's out of fabric. Saffold's a big guy. <laughs> All right, we got, uh, we got some mid-season grades coming up. Stick around. We got more Titans Blitz on the other yeah. side. Yeah. All right, back. Welcome back to the Titans Blitz presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Lance and Eddie back with you. And it is now the two-minute warning here on the show. And normally at this time, we would talk about the keys to the upcoming game. Mm. The upcoming game is on the couch. Yes. Watching, the, watching the Ravens beat the Texans. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but right now, let's hand out some uh, some mid-season grades, I yes. guess, if we will. And let's talk about uh, each phase of the game here. So first up, we'll talk about the uh, special teams leader, of the team. Who do you think is doing the best on special teams? Oh, without a question, Kern. Kern, right? I mean, he's, Kern. he's a punter. Let's I mean, he's it. just been fantastic. Right? Yeah, so Brett Kern, I mean, we, we've been talking about him all season, talking about our punter, but yeah, he, he changes the field for you. He's the coffin corner. You he can, any any type of it's like me on the golf course. Just you know, like you when on I the golf can, course, I can right? fade, I can hit the draw, <laughs> the low drive, I can hit it all. But now he's been fantastic all season long, like you mentioned. 
uh, just just really changing the, the field. Uh, strong leg. Right. Um, I, I think I said early in the year, you know, he should be up for MVP. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he even <laughs> sacrificed fantastic. his body on a on a fourth down uh, against the Bucks. <laughs> right, so, right, right. You know, the more you can do. Yeah, the more you can do. <laughs> uh, but no, it is it is. You just can't talk about it enough in terms of field position no. and what, how he sets it up for our defense. Our yeah. defense is playing phenomenal a lot because of what he's doing. Yeah, and punters typically are underappreciated yeah. and never un, and totally underrated until yeah. you really need them to flip the field. But he's been fantastic. He's a superstar. Yeah, all right. Let's move on to the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, we, we mentioned it already. You got it. We got to go with Henry, right? I, without, without a doubt. Right. I mean, big Henry. I mean, King Henry has just been phenomenal. Um, all season long, big breakout game. Yeah. I mean, listen, the kid, he gets out in space like this. No one is going to catch him. Yeah. He it, breaks angles at six foot four, 250 pounds, and he's able to you know, do that inside the, uh, in between the tackles. You know, I, just, yeah. His footwork to awesome. me has really improved this year as well. He's got 832 yards on the season so far. He's on track for 1,331 yards last year he had uh, just over a thousand so yeah. he's having his best season best season yeah, yeah uh, eight touchdowns to go with that and also too uh, hats off to Tannehill for his uh, what he's done in his four games that's the, been the spark yeah. so but yeah 10 for 10 in the red zone 10 for 10 in the red zone yeah, you gave me that mission yeah yes. uh, moving on all right defensive uh, side of the ball who you, who you like on defense I mean you can pick a guy Logan yeah. Ryan Byron. that's my guy I mean, yes you do uh, Logan's having an all-pro season in yes. my opinion yes but the kid that I want to talk about is Jeffrey El Jefe oh okay Simmons. you're all about you're all about El Jefe Man, he's Albert Hainsworth 2.0 okay because to come off of a, of a, of a knee ACL. injury, yeah. ACL, not have a preseason, not have uh, four or five games to really find his sea legs, coming in and dominating on, I, I want to say he's not 100%, probably more right. like 80 right now. But he's still figuring it he's out. He's a with baby. The team. Yeah. <laughs> he's a baby doing that's, that to grow. That's a Wait big baby. until he figures the game out. <laughs> yeah. El Jefe. Yeah. He's. <laughs> He's going to be he is. a staple for years to come in his defense. I think he'll be the face of the franchise or that defense in the next two to three years. Uh, but for real, getting back to Logan yeah. Ryan, though, playing slot corner, he's mm -hmm. got three and a half sacks, three interceptions, but how many passes defended? He's all he's over all the over field. The all over the field. I mean, and he's baiting. I like to watch him bait quarterbacks because he gives a lot of space and then and then makes up that ground and such a leader back there for the and, rest and of the And just to think a couple seasons ago that he was kind of on the bubble. He might be here. He might not be here, but really has solidified his position as the leader of this defense. Uh, he's done, been there, done it in New England, won a Super mm -hmm. Bowl or two, so he knows yeah. how to prepare. He knows what a, a, a championship product looks like. Yeah. Um, he's been a professional through and through, both on and off the field. He's one of my favorite people, yeah. but certainly one of my favorite Titans in the defense. So glad he's Absolutely. a Titan. Love you, Logan Ryan. All yes, right, sir. well, uh, we got uh, one more hero we want to talk about on the other side. Don't go away, Titans. Let's be right back. Yeah. Welcome back to the Titans Blitz presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. It's now overtime here on the show and time for our Wendy's Hot Take of the Week. And I just want to talk about him one more time, Mr. Joshua Kalu, who had uh, the big block at the end of the game. Yeah, how fun was that, right? The big block? Uh, so special right here. You know, he, he, he talked about it and he set it up. He set it up. He kept watching the cadence and he timed this perfectly. Uh, but what I want to talk to you about, Eddie, is, well, really it's about this right here. We, we got a clip of him in the locker room uh -huh. just expressing his joy. Let's roll it. I was happy. No just, for flag. Just, I, was just, I was just happy. I knew what I just did and I was, ex I, was I can't even put the words out there, man. I was happy. Just happy, just genuinely happy. Not even for me, just for the team, man. We really needed this. We really needed this. And that was good. So oh. that's something, it's something to rally around. It got everybody excited. And the, the players on the field when this is over, I mean, they, they just, they threw themselves around it. But I want to ask you this. This game is so much about the war and the aggression and the, you know, you, it's a dog fight. Mm -hmm. But how important is joy? In this game, stuff. Uh, it's it's a huge ingredient. I mean, obviously, you got to get it with the wins. Yeah, but that's um, that's my <laughs> point. When you win, there's joy. Yeah. But when you lose, there's definitely pain because you don't see. We, we see the Sunday. You know, yeah. you don't see from Monday 
to Sunday with the what you go through, especially after a loss, how you got to pick yourself back up, how you got to, you know, recharge your battery and believe in the, the game plan, believe in what Mike Vrabel is telling you to, to get to get up and since you still got a chance, you still mm -hmm. got hope to make it to the postseason and beyond. And to, to put all your, you're pouring all of your, your focus, your energy into the game plan for success. And when yeah. you finally get the victory, yeah. it's joy, especially when you ended the way that they did it there. So, yeah. and, and you're going into a bye week. Oh, what could be better? I mean, Let me crazy. ask you this. Did you feel the joy? Yeah. You're still feeling the joy? That's what I want to hear. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.